Hello and welcome to this tutorial on how to make a uh, evergreen tree or a pine tree, Christmas tree, some kind of tree. Um, the tutorial I'm doing, uh, I'm going to try to split this up in a couple different ways to where uh, I show you how to build the high poly and the low poly version kind of at the same time. Um, and when I say low poly, I just mean it's not a billion polygons compared to the um, high poly that it won't be a billion, but it's going to be um, quite a lot compared. Um, and I'll kind of put these two tools together and show you how they work. So uh, a lot of what I'm going to be using is going to be with the uh, graphite modeling tools. If you don't see uh, the graphite modeling tools, you have an icon here that says graphite modeling tools. Click on that and we're just going to drop this down. And what we're going to mostly be using is object paint and um, uh, some of the freeform tools, which they're not showing here currently, but um, we'll get into that. Uh, I need to have an object here for uh, it to work off of. So object paint, what this allows you to do is paint any object that you have created, any geometry, uh, what have you. Um, you have the, here you'll have the object uh, that you'll be painting or objects and you're able to either paint a single object or one object that you have. All of the objects that you want to put into your list, which your list is located here, these are your paint objects. So you'll be able to add these either by uh, clicking the add button and going down through the list of objects that you have created or you can pick them one at a time in the scene. So that takes you here. So you can paint all of the objects in order, which means based on the list, it'll paint one at a time uh, over and over again. Or you can paint them all randomly. I'm usually going to paint all randomly uh, if I have multiple objects uh, in my scene. <clears throat> and so this was the list. And this is just to pick an object uh, to add to the list uh, and this is kind of a repeated process. Under paint on you've got a couple different options. You can paint on the grid that you have here in your viewport. You can paint on a specific selected object or you can just paint on the entire scene. Uh, this would be painting, uh, you can see here it says paints objects uh, on object surfaces under the mouse cursor and uh, on the grid uh, at the same time. Um, so then under a line here, uh, this norm, uh, aligns to normal. This means that it will draw it on the object uh, based on the uh, way the polygon normal is facing. Um, and it will follow the stroke. We're going to leave that on. And if you create your objects in the top view, um, or the perspective view, but let's just go with the top view for this. Um, if you create them, their Z direction, uh, their alignment, if we go to the hierarchy panel and we affect pivot point only, the objects will need to be aligned to the world. So if it's pointed straight up, whatever the object is, that's the direction that it's going to come off of the object. So that's what I try to do. We'll get into spacing when we start uh, painting. Basically, the smaller this number is, the closer the painted objects will be, and the further, the further they'll be. Over here, I like to think of this as move, rotate, and scale with my painting. Um, and um, so we have our uh, UV, W uh, directions. Uh, and this allows you to offset uh, some of the objects uh, slightly in one way or another. Um, it's, uh, to scatter them, that is. And then here under rotation, we've got X, Y, and Z. So this is how the objects will be rotated on the object that we <clears throat> are painting them on and we can even set these to uh, random numbers and we'll mess around with these more whenever I get further into the demo and then over here we have the scale of the object so let's say you modeled the thing really large uh, you can scale this number down and then the object that you created when you paint it will be smaller and underneath here you've got options for painting it evenly uh, which means that it's only going to use a scale of whatever this number is you have paint it randomly which means it's going to have uh, it's going to pick a scale in between these two numbers and then you've got paint on a ramp that means that the object will um, 
either shrink or grow with your brush stroke. So, uh, and we will be using uh, some of each of these. So I'm gonna leave this on uh, even just so we can take a look. So the first thing I need to do is um, whenever I'm working with creating a tree, uh, what I start with typically is the smallest part of the tree and I work my way to the largest section. So I'm gonna show you how to make a pine tree. So I'll start with the needles. I'll paint the needles onto a stem and I'll paint the uh, stem onto a branch and the branch will go on the tree. Um, and we'll be using the branching tool, which is under freeform. Once we have an object selected, we'll be able to see how freeform works. So uh, first, I'm going to start with the pine needles. And the pine needle shape that I want, uh, I'm going to start with a um, cylinder. My cylinder is going to have one height segment and three sides. Okay. Um, I do want to leave that on smooth. And so what I'm doing here is just making the starting point for my stem. And this is going to be fairly uh, small. So let me look at what I've got here. And this will be created kind of large, but using our scale and the object paint, we'll be able to change this. So um, this will be just the uh, stem section that we have. So I'm actually going to make it uh, quite a bit skinnier. And little shorter okay and just for the heck of it I'm gonna make it brown so that'll be our stem if I want I can go ahead and name this as stem um, piece something like that just so I know that this is a stem alright so now I'm going to convert this into an editable poly and I will scale down the top part of my stem so it gets narrower as it gets to the top and I'm just going to scale it down really small okay so that'll be my stem now I'm going to take this same object I'm going to move it off over to the sign side and I'm going to call this needle piece this one I'm going to make green and I'm going to select the top section that I have here and collapse it down so that it merges all these vertices together and this is going to be our needle that we're going to paint onto our stem and it needs to be quite a bit smaller so I will scale it down So I scaled it down like 30%, um, or down to 30. Now that I've moved this though, I need to make sure that um, my pivot point is near the bottom. So in element mode, I'm just going to move this down. I'm going to go to the front view so I can see this a little better. And I'll move this down, and I want to go down to where this needle will penetrate uh, into the stem that I have so to make sure of that if I go to the hierarchy and I go to effect pivot point I can see that my pivot point is uh, kind of above the lower part here that's what I want I want this to be sunk in a little bit and I'll show you why that is in a moment so the other thing I want to do is go to perspective mode and delete this polygon on the bottom we don't need that it's gonna be sunk uh, into the stem so we don't need to see it. And you can also check in hierarchy mode. I want to go to effect pivot point only. I want to make sure that my Z direction here is blue. Uh, not that it's blue, but that it's pointing in the actual Z direction uh, in the max world space. And I can see here, down at the bottom, that uh, the Z direction is pointed up. So let's also make sure that our needle, or our stem, is also pointed up. So just for the time being, I'm going to make two uh, materials here. I'm going to make a brown material, kind of brown. Turn my saturation up a bit. 
going with something that's kind of gray, but um, kind of brown too. Put that down a little, because wood usually, you know, bark is kind of a grayer color than a brown color. But I'll go with something that's like a gray brown, and this will be applied to my stem, and then my needle will get kind of a uh, evergreen tree color. Again, a little bit gray, kind of a dark green. And I'll apply that to oh, I'll apply that to my needle. Okay. Now I'm doing that now because I'm already setting that these colors will be applied here so that whenever uh, I build this entire tree, I don't have to go down and texture um, these. All right, so I'll call this needle color. If I want to get really picky, I could make a couple different ones of these needles, um, which I might do, and put a separate color on each of them. So let's just go ahead and do that. Needle color one. I'll copy this over here just by clicking and dragging. This will be my needle color uh, two. And I'll change this up slightly. So maybe this will be slightly darker. And needle color three. And this one maybe be uh, desaturated and a little lighter. Okay, so I'll make two copies of this. So I'll have needle piece. Um, I'll call this needle piece two, and it'll be a copy. And I want two of them. And then the other one. Here I'll call needle piece three. And just to be consistent, I'll call this one needle piece one. Okay. So I'll go to the uh, vertex here that I have at the top. I'll make this one a little bit shorter. And I'll make this one a little longer. All right, so that covers that now I just need to apply my <clears throat> my other colors here all right so those will be slightly different so now what I'll do is I will paint this uh, these onto my stem so I'm going to go to my edit object list and click on that and I'll pick and make sure that I pick my one my two and three and I can just close this and now I'll tell this do all randomly and I'll zoom in here a little bit just so I can see where I'm painting alright so I'm just gonna go ahead and select my stem and I'm gonna switch my paint on to paint on selected objects so that way it's only painting on this and not on the grid and now I'll turn on my paint function and you'll see I, I now have uh, access to the check mark and the X nothing is set in stone with what I paint here until I click one of these so I'll just start at the bottom I'll click and drag up and I'm just kinda wiggling between here uh, just to make sure I'm kinda covering this now you'll see I only got three uh, needles that popped up so I'll set my spacing to whoa. I want to be a lot closer, but not that much closer. Um, so it's like 0.1, let's do 0 0.125. I'm going to set my, so if I hit check, these will all be here. If I hit X, they'll go away. I can continue to change all of my options here, so um, I kind of show you how some of these things work. So if I look at this, I didn't paint all the way up. So I'm going to hit the X and now I'm going to paint again and you'll see what happens when I kind of zigzag through here. It just kind of helps um, finish up the last little bit of the stem here. There we go. So now you can see it goes uh, closer to being at the top. And you can see the needles are a different color based on that, uh, the different materials we put on. Alright, so I'm not hitting check yet. 
it's aligning the right way because I created it and it's coming off of this object based on the Z direction so they're sticking off of it. If I change this to Y it's gonna move another way if I do X it's going to look kind of the same way I want Z. If I change my U direction they're gonna scatter away from the object this way if I change the y, uh, V direction they'll scatter that direction and the W will scatter this way. I don't want any scatter on here. Um, so now I'll go to my X direction and I can see that these are moving along the X this way. So if I go to Y they're rotating up and down. I do want them to rotate up um, as the needles are coming off of here and uh, I want them to actually rotate in a random direction around uh, the X direction that we had there. If I turn that back off you can see the X direction works its way around the object. So I'm going to set that to random. Okay. Now I'm going to change my spacing even more so that I even have more of these coming off here. So I'll just keep clicking this down until I get something close to what I want. That's probably going to be a bit better. I don't want to go too uh, too far here. Now, what I want to happen though is I want them to be larger down here and smaller as they get to the top. So this is where I'm going to, right now they're set to even, so they're all 100% the size that I made them. I'm going to go to ramp and right now it's ramping the opposite direction that I'd want them to go. So I'll try to turn this to um, let's say it's almost going to be the opposite of what's here. I'm not going to go down to 20. Let's try 45. Okay, and we'll set this to 100. And that's a bit closer to what I want. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Let me make this just slightly closer. Yeah. So that's the. Uh, let me hide this for a second so we can see this a little bigger. That's the pine stem uh, all by itself. So that's fairly easy to create. Now we can build the next part, which will be uh, we're going from our um, our stem, which will then go onto our branch. Now I could use this object that I have here and paint that onto the branch. And that's going to start being that's where I'd get into the million polygons. I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to convert this into its own object um, so it'll be one object that I can paint. So um, let me go ahead and save here. So make a uh, folder here. I'll just call this pine tree. and name my file pine stem because that's where I'm at with it. So I'll save that. Alright, so now um, I can get rid of these needles that I have. I don't need them anymore. And right now I can see that my text here is bolded which means these are all um, instanced objects. I can make all of these unique so what I'm going to do is actually since this is the only object I have here now I don't really have to go as far as to do that. Um, I do have to make them unique or else I can't attach them together so I will convert this to uh, just convert all to editable poly and that's going to break that link between the instanced objects. So now I can see that my text here is no longer bolded. So now I can select my tree stem so there's my stem piece and I'll do attach list and now I can see I've got all these needle pieces that's a lot of them alright and I'll attach them I'll get this prompt that comes up that says match material IDs to material I do want that and I do want to condense this down to a single material and I'll show you what happens so I'll click OK and I'll take a second and hopefully not crash that would be awesome if it didn't crash. Let's hope.
I did click it, right? I always get so nervous with these sorts of things. Okay, there we go. So I thought I clicked it, I didn't. Um, so now this is all uh, one object. And we'll switch this to um, shaded view just so uh, this kind of updates faster. So now instead of using this actual object to paint on a stem, uh, which I could do, and it would make, oh no, my um, stuff is panning around. Crap. All right, well, we can still see everything. I just can't see my menus, and hopefully this doesn't keep messing up on me. Um, but anyway, um, I can now um, take my uh, object here and render it out into its own texture, and I can render out each angle, and that will give me a texture that I can then apply on two planes, and two planes is going to be a lot less polygons than looking at this. So that's the next step that I'm going to do. So I'm going to go in and put in some really quick lights um, around my objects just so it has some shading um, on it. So I'll just do an Omni light and I'll put one on each side of it here. Actually, what I'll do is um, I'll make these instances instead. So I'll turn on my shadows. Uh, I'm not going to do ray trace. It's not going to be needed for this because it's it's pretty small. Um, go to my front view. And I'll turn on my far attenuation. Set this to all right. So set this to um, just cover most of the uh, uh, stem here, and I'll move my start value to about the center. Now I'm in the top view. I'll just move this around as an instance again and again this way it'll be lit from all sides and it'll uh, have some relatively decent shadows on here I might want to make my uh, shadow map parameters set to 0 I'll do 1024 I'll set the sample bias to 6 um, Let's take a look at how this renders. Okay, so that looks okay. I can live with that. It's a little dark towards the center. That's fine. So I'll go into the front view, and I need to set up uh, a camera. So I'll set my camera as a free camera. I really hate how this is panning around. It was set to no pan, but I hit a shortcut that's now messing it up, and the shortcut won't undo it. I'm going to center it to uh, my actual pine stem, and I need to change my render settings to something narrow. So we'll just go with uh, 150 and set this to 450. And this should be uh, narrow enough. I also want to turn on my safe frames and I'll zoom this in and I could go a little shorter let's change that to 300 so basically what I'm doing is taking a 3D object and making a texture out of it all right, so I will hit uh, render and see what I've got. Okay, I need a little bit more light on the bottom of this though. So I'll go to uh, my top view. Let me turn off uh, save frames. My 
can I select my light? Why do things never work? There we go. So I'll move this instance to the center and I'll have it one on top and one on bottom. And let's go back to our camera view and we'll show save frames. What happened there? Did it zoom in? Yeah, it did. Oh, I didn't actually have my camera zoomed out. I was still in the front view. I could probably just stick with the front view. I'll just use that. I don't need the camera in there. This will be good enough. So I'll hit render. That's a little better. I can still see some of the bottom. Um, so I also want my uh, background color here to be green just so this uh, texture the anti-aliasing doesn't show a big green or black line around here so the easy way to do this is I can just right click on the image and it's gonna put the color that I right clicked on up here I'll copy that I'll go to my uh, rendering environment I'll bring this down I'll go to color paste and I'll paste that in. Now whenever I render I'll get a green color in the background. I'm gonna make my render settings here just slightly bigger so I'm gonna lock my image aspect ratio and instead of 300 um, I'll do uh, 512 and see how that looks. Alright so that's my one view so I'll save this out as pine tree and I'll save it as a target file with an alpha channel so I'll just call this uh, pine stem and I'll do one save pre-multiplied alpha I don't need to compress it and I want it to be 32 uh, bits per pixel I hit OK now I'll go to my um, back view I'll render again, save that as number two, go to my left view, move that down, almost centered there, and I'll save that. I don't really like that the black that I'm getting down there, but this should be fine. This will be number three. And one more from the right view. Line that up to the center and render again. And I'll save that as number four. Okay. So now I don't need this high poly object anymore. So I'll save this as a one, and I'll um, hmm, I'll just hide it for now. With that hidden, I'm going to draw a plane that's about the same size as what I rendered. And if I wanted to do this perfectly, I could just do uh, 10 by 5. That way it's at the same aspect ratio as the image that I had. Um, since I did make this in the front view, let me turn off my save frames here. Um, since I did make this in the front view, if I wanted to paint this, I need to make sure that uh, my alignment of this is aligned to world. Because right now you can see that uh, my Y value is actually up. So I'm going to do align to world to make sure that that's set there. And I will move this part down near the bottom, but not all the way to the bottom. And turn off effect pivot point. I'm going to. Ugh, there we go. Um, so this object is 
uh, just a plane. So if I was to render it, oh, I don't need my lights in here right now either. Really hate how that's moving. Um, so my plane is just one sided. So you can't see it on the other side. So what I need to do is make a material that is two sided. So I'll go to my material editor and I'm going to make my um, stem image 01. This will be my first one. And this is going to be <coughs> a double sided material. And I'll just discard the old one. And so now I've got two materials that I'm going to have here. Uh, my one facing one, which will be on this side, and my back facing one, which will be on this side. So the facing will be a standard. Um, I'm going to select my bitmap. And I'll set that to stem, uh, pine stem one. Under my settings here, I want to make sure that my alpha source is set to none. I want it to be opaque. And now I'll go up and I'll drag this into my opacity. So I'm using the same image. I'm going to do it as a copy. And this one instead is going to be set to alpha and image alpha. And that'll get rid of. Um, the background. So now if I come back up uh, here, I'm also going to turn on show shaded material in viewport. That'll be applied uh, after the fact. Now that I've got that one created, let's name this Pine Stem 1 or front. Let's do front. I'm going to take Pine Stem front and copy that into the back material. This will also be a copy. And I'll rename it Pine Stem Back. Okay. Now I'm going to switch my back image, so my bitmap here, to Pine Stem 2. I don't need to change my settings because they're already set up from before when I copied this over. And I'll change my opacity for this also to Pine Stem 2. So now I've got uh, an image that'll be on the front and an image that'll be on the back. Now with that done, I can apply this and we can take a look at what's happening. So I've got one image for the front and one image for the back. And they're going to look very uh, kind of similar uh, until we render them. So this will be the front of my, uh, uh, the front and back of my pine stem. So this is how we make the low poly version of it. So I'm going to hold shift. Uh, cancel. I want to make sure that I have my angle snap toggle turned on. I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees. And it's not going to really matter what I name this one, just make sure it's a copy. And so uh, I'll call this first one uh, low poly, so LP uh, pine stem. And I don't need to name the other one because this one's going to be added to uh, the other one that I have. So I'm going to take uh, stem image one, copy that over here, and call this stem image two. And then I'll rename these pine stem uh, left from the left view and pine stem right. Under pine stem left, I want to change my map material or my map uh, bitmap to pine stem three, and the opacity for this one also set to pine stem three, and then my right one will be uh, pine stem four. Pine stem 4, and the opacity map will be pine stem 4. And that will get applied to, right now it's just called plane 02. Like I said, that name's just fine. So I'll apply that, and we can kind of take a look at the low poly 
pine stem that we have. So now that I have this, I'm going to select my low poly pine stem. I'm going to convert it to an editable poly. And I will attach it to my other one. And I want to match material IDs. And I'll hit OK. So now what I have under my materials, I'll step down one here. If I was to pick this, I could see that I've got a multi sub object which holds stem image one, which holds the front and back, and stem image two, which holds the left and right, all in one material slot here. So that's creating the low poly pine stem. Um, so now what we're going to do is draw out what our pine tree will be. And I'll get rid of these lights because they're going to be too small in a minute for um, anything else that I want to do. So just select these and delete them. And now that I've got this created, I'm going to save as uh, save as I uh, will just put a LP underscore for low poly stem and I'll save. All right, so uh, now that I've got this, I can paint this onto my branch. So we need to create a branch uh, for it to um, come off of. And that's going to work exactly the same way as we painted the needles onto this stem. So I'm just going to move this off to the side for now. And I'll create a cylinder. I want the cylinder to be eight sided. And actually, I don't really need it to be eight sided for what we're doing because you're going to see very little of this. So to keep this a little bit more low poly, and I'll probably be fine with uh, three sided, but I'll do four sided for this. Um, so it'll be uh, four sided, and uh, the height segments and cap segments will be set to one. So now I'll just draw out a base for. Uh, my pine tree to come out of. Wait. Center. Why is it doing that? Oh, because it is cylinder. That's fine. I was trying to figure out what was happening there. So I'm just going to extrude this up a little bit. I'm going to convert this to an editable poly. The first thing I want to do is I want to delete my polygon on the bottom because I don't need that. And I'll move this one up and scale it down a little bit. And while it's selected, I'm just going to apply the brown that I used for to create my uh, base for my tree. So now what I'll be able to do is what, with this selected, I'll turn back on my graph, uh, graphite modeling tools and uh, this time I want to go to freeform and now that I'm under freeform and I've got something selected you can see that I've got a bunch of different options here we're going to be using the branches um, tool so I'll zoom out pretty far and I want to make sure that uh, my polygon on top here is selected I think that might be good enough. So what I'm going to do is uh, select branches. I'm going to open up poly draw here. My minimum distance, I'm going to switch pixels, 10 pixels to 10 units. And I'll leave the branching taper at negative 0.9. It won't be a new object. And uh, this is going to be just fine, the solve surface. Uh, it's just fine the way it is. So all I need to do is click and drag up and create my pine tree. So there, made it a little wiggly. And it's a little crooked because I had to draw uh, because of the view I had to draw it in. So that's the front view. Let me look at the left view here. Yeah, so that'd be kind of a crooked tree. So let me 
select these polygons. And I'll rotate these. And move those back. That's a little bit better. So that's going to be uh, my tree uh, that I'm going to have. Now I need to paint branches on here, and I need to uh, paint my pine stems on those branches. So I can actually use what I have here as a starting point for my branches. So what I'll do is I'll hold shift and move this over as a copy. I'll call this branch one. And I'm going to delete um, this bottom section here. Go into element mode and move this branch down. And again, I'm moving this under my ground plane, my zero uh, in the Z here. Um, that way I can set my pivot point, make sure it's aligned to world, but it's already set down at the bottom. I'll just center it up just a little bit. Um, so I'll use this object, I'll actually scale it down a little bit. And I'm scaling it in element mode so that I don't mess up my actual scale function. So I'll scale this down. And I'll move it down to the bottom. And again, I'm moving it down to where this branch will end up penetrating the tree uh, just a little bit. So that's one branch. I'm going to take this and make a second one from it. So just hold shift. I'll make a copy. And then I'm going to rotate this just to make it a little different. I'll scale it a little shorter. And I'll move it down, giving it enough to penetrate the tree. And I might even throw a noise modifier on it just to change it up. Uh, slightly. It's not going to make the biggest um, change in it, but let's change this to 10 by 10. And turn this to fractal. There. Now I'll take this one, duplicate it over. I'll change the seed value here to something different. And that'll change up my tree even more. Convert that to an editable poly. Convert this one to an editable poly. And for good measure, I'll take this one and also rotate it slightly. All right. And I want to make sure that my Uh, pivot points are going through the uh, center of the bottom of my branch. That's good. And this one doesn't have to be completely perfect, but it'll look better uh, if it is. And this one can also get a little bit smaller. So I'll just scale it. Again, moving that down to the ground plane so that all of my pivot points, if I look at them, should be down here. I'll fix that one. Uh, and aligned with the center of my branches. Okay, and the reason I'm painting these or uh, making these slightly smaller and rotating them a little is when I paint these up my tree um, if I don't 
the tree is going to have this like perfectly angled um, look and that's going to look really weird and I don't want that so now what I have to do is I have to paint my pine cone or my pine stems onto these so what I'll do is um, maybe I'll make again a couple of different ones so move this over and this will be a copy and I'm just going to put an FFD 2x2x2 two by two by two modifier select my control points make this a little of a different size here and once again same idea I'll make this one slightly smaller than the other and skinnier convert these back to netable polys. Alright, so now I've got my different stems. So now I can go back to object paint. I'm going to go to my object list and there's nothing in here, so that's good. I'll go to pick and I'll pick my three different pine uh, stem, low poly pine stems. And now I can paint these up my branches. So just kind of zoom in a little bit and I'll paint and try to follow these up. Oh wait, I need to change my selected object. Okay, now I can paint. Okay, before I get too far along with this, I need to change my spacing now or else I'm going to screw things up. So let's just change this a little bit. So let's go with 0.5 to start with. 0 0.5. Okay, I'm going to hit X. And make sure, okay, that's set to all randomly. Okay, so now I'll click and drag up my branch here. Alright, so I want this to be a bit larger on the, uh, the bottom. So let's just scale this up. That's pretty good. And I'm going to even scale this number up a little bit. Uh, maybe not quite so much. So let's say 160 and 60. And then I'll just make sure that I kind of like the way that this is layered around. And I do. That looks fine. Alright, so now I need to attach all of these objects to my branch. So, um, I'm going to select all of my objects here. I'm going to right click and I will um, convert them to an editable poly to break their instances to these. And then I'll select my uh, my branch three, and um, actually I'll select all of this again, and I'll deselect my stem or my branch. With all those selected, I'm going to create a selection set, and I'll name this uh, pine stems group one. And the reason I'm doing that is now whenever I select my branch down here and I go to attach I'm going to go to attach list I can just go to my selection set and say pine stem group uh, one and attach and I'm going to match my material IDs to the material and condense the material IDs. 
and I do that, everything should become one object. And at this point, I'm going to save again, which is going to move everything. Um, so I'll save as, and I'll just do um, a plus save on there. All right, so that's one, and that one is done and out of the way. So now I'm going to paint on the next one and do exactly the same thing. So I'll do paint on, selected object, and just zoom out a little. And I'll start painting these on here. And maybe I'll make these ones slightly larger. And I'm going to leave it that. Hit the check mark. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to select all the objects here. Right click, convert to um, editable poly. I'll deselect my branch at the bottom. And I'll name this. I don't even think my other one will still be in there. So it doesn't matter what I really name it. Pine stem group uh, group alright so now I'll select my stem or my branch and I'll come down to attach list pine stem group attach and OK And there's my next branch. And now move that out of the way. Oh, I left one off the bottom. Delete. Okay, so now I've got my last one. So I'm going to select it. And just zoom in here a little bit just so I can see better. Paint on. And I'll paint up my branch. Alright, so that one's finished. Finish that out. Select everything. Convert to edible poly. I'm actually going to try something, see if this works. And I'll just name this bleh. Doesn't matter. Because there's nothing else that's going to be in that list. I'll select my branch 01, attach list. and attach all of those. And let's make sure I got everything. Yeah, that worked. So that's branch 02 and branch 01. So now I don't need these low poly ones anymore. I'm just going to hide them. And now I've got my other objects that I'm going to put in my list. So I'm just going to remove these ones from my list and I'll pick number one, pick number two, and pick number three. And now these will be my objects that I paint onto here. And again, this is going to work exactly the same way I've been doing it. This is why I'm starting with the smallest part and working my way up. So I'll now paint and so I can see that, that this isn't going to work as is. So let's change my size down. I'll just start with it being 100 and kind of work from there. So the one thing I need to do is change my direction. I'm going to change my branches so they're pointing down rather than pointing up. Okay, let's get rid of that. And I'll start painting. And I can already see there's going to be way too many, so I'll change my spacing again. And I'll change it to, mm, uh, let's just go with three. So I'll just type in three, nice round number. And now I'll paint it all the way up the tree. So I'm going to start somewhere near the bottom. OK, and as you can see, I need to get a lot smaller towards the top. So bring this down to small maybe rotate these down a bit more and maybe 
change my spacing. Change it down this direction. And I might even make these a little smaller towards the top. And to see what I'm left with, I'll hide these other ones and get out of paint mode and you can see my tree with all of its many little stems and all of its branches and it's got this very organic look you know it doesn't look like um, you know a perfect tree that's you know perfectly symmetrical or whatever it's organic it's completely different all the way around and that's how you make a evergreen pine tree Christmas tree giant tree um, in max now this is uh, currently let's see turn on so right now this says that it is uh, 700,000 polygons that's quite a bit that's not gonna really work for a game engine so uh, at one point you saw where let me just go into oops, uh, wireframe mode you can see what I've got here so I've got the all these little uh, polygons little crossing polygons that are sticking off of each one of my branches so I made all these branches um, high poly. What I could have done exactly what I did with each individual stem um, instead of creating one stem uh, or a bunch of stems I could have rendered out that stem and did the crossing uh, a couple of different ways and then painted the uh, the material version onto my main tree which would have made this a lot less polygons but if you're not too worried about you know polygons and things like that then you can just work with what you have here this is a pretty dense tree um, it's not even a million polygons though yet and you could attach this entire tree together and then paint it throughout with different scales and um, put it all together I would do it but I'm afraid that drawing too many of them with my computer would probably crash the system I hope you enjoyed this I hope you found it um, educational and learn something from it leave me some comments and let me know other things that you might want to see how to make this is one of the most complicated things um, I think that you can kinda make trees are relatively difficult if you wanted to make a tree that had leaves on it I would make it exactly the same way except for these would be leaves uh, and uh, your branches would be a little more organic in the way they uh, grew but it would be done basically the same idea as this so thank you for watching. Please subscribe, comment, and all that good stuff. And use Adobe Captivate, apparently.